All right, so uh, we talked about fibrous connective tissue, uh, both loose and dense. And so our third category, and the one that we're going to focus on in this lecture, is cartilages. So what are cartilages? Um, cartilages are a stiff connective tissue, and this is part of what distinguishes them. Um, you know, dense, regular connective tissue is, is very, very, very strong, but it's not stiff. You can't push with it. Uh, cartilage is a stiff connective tissue, and uh, it has a flexible matrix that usually has a lot of collagen in it, um, though it can have different types of collagen in it, and it has a, uh, a ground material that is very rich in glycosaminoglycans, GAGs. So it forms a very, very, very gelatinous uh, ground substance. Where do you find cartilage in the body? Um, well, you find it in the ear, so it gives shape to your ear. Um, the tip of your nose your larynx, your voice box, um, large portions of your trachea. Uh, cartilage is actually where your bones come from. All of the bones in your body start off as cartilage. Um, and in fact, evolutionarily, uh, the first, well, uh, the, the first sort of skeletons that developed were actually cartilage skeletons. Uh, so things like sharks have cartilage skeletons, and um, that's a very specialized type of cartilage. Uh, but in in the bony fishes and in everything that descends from them, that cartilaginous tissue began to ossify, which means that it has minerals that condense on it, usually calcium, um, and became bone tissue. So ossification or mineralization is the process of depositing minerals, uh, mostly calcium, though a few other things as well, onto uh, collagen fibers in order to harden the material. Um, so since your bones come from cartilage, uh, you actually can find some cartilage still on your bones. Uh, if you're an adult, you will still find cartilage at the ends of your long bones where it forms a, a, a surface uh, that's a little bit greasy so that the ends of your bones can kind of rub against each other without grating against each other. Uh, you also find cartilage connecting various bony structures together. Your ribs, uh, are connected to your sternum by cartilage. There's cartilage in between the vertebrae of your spine, and there's cartilage in your, what's called your pubic symphysis, which is where uh, the two front sides of your pelvis, uh, pelvic bone, uh, come together. Uh, what makes cartilage special? There's a few things. Um, so a few things about it. Because cartilage has this ground substance that is so very dense and gelatinous, even if it doesn't have a whole bunch of fibers running through it, it's like the ground substance itself has so many glycosaminoglycans in it that um, it's, it's really, really dense and resistant. Um, that means that you don't actually see many blood vessels at all going through it. So cartilage... Uh, has very little blood flow to it, uh, and that means that it heals very slowly. New cells, repair cells, um, are carried to an area by blood. Uh, the process of healing and repair is very, very energy intensive, so you need a lot of sugar, you need a lot of um, uh, uh, oxygen, and your cartilage doesn't get any of that. Your cartilage gets very little uh, oxygen. It gets very little uh, 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 sugar. Um, only basically what can absorb through diffusion. So it heals either really, really slowly or it doesn't heal at all. Um, nutrients are brought in and wastes are removed by diffusion uh, or compression. So actually the cartilage at the end of your joints 
what happens is that when you exercise, when you move, um, you compress that cartilage and it sort of moves fluid into and out of it, kind of like squeezing a sponge underwater. Uh, so they can heal a little bit better because they're under this constant squeezing to pump fluid out. But things like your ears, your ears just don't really heal very well. Um, at least the cartilaginous portion of your ears do not. Uh, some of you may have heard of the term cauliflower ear. Cauliflower ear is uh, something that uh, like boxers and wrestlers and people who do mixed martial arts sometimes get um, from having their ear grabbed or punched on a regular basis. The tissue gets damaged and, um, and, and it can't heal. And uh, unless, if it gets damaged, it heals very slowly. And if it gets damaged too much before it has a chance to heal, which again, is very slow, uh, the cells just die. And the ear begins to droop and curl up on itself, looking like a lump of cauliflower, as the cartilage basically just goes kaput and can no longer heal itself. Um, because there's just simply no blood vessels going anywhere close to the ear. Well, they're close to the ear, but they're not going inside of the ear. Uh, there are three types of cartilage that you'll find in the human body. Hyaline cartilage, fibrocartilage, and elastic cartilage. And I'm going to talk about each of them in turn. Uh, but first, uh, some things that all cartilage has in common, um, which is its connective tissue. So it has cells, and it has an extracellular matrix, and it has a ground substance. So there are basically uh, some areas of cartilage. Uh, your cartilage has chondroblasts. Remember, blasts build. So these are cells that build cartilage. Chondroblasts are usually found uh, not inside of the cartilage. You don't need them there. That cartilage has already been built. But they're found in this layer of tissue that's next to the cartilage called the perichondrium. Perichondrium. Peri means nearby, so this means near the cartilage. This is dense, irregular connective tissue that has a lot of these chondroblasts in it. And the chondroblasts will secrete uh, car uh, uh, the, the extracellular matrix around them, the, both the fibers and the ground substance. And eventually, as, as the cartilage gets built around them, they get trapped inside, sort of like getting painted into a corner, right? And then they can't move out because cells don't move through the very thick cartilage very well. Uh, so they get trapped inside of these little rooms inside of the cartilage, and those rooms are called lacunae, which means a, a space. Um, so we have the perichondrium, which is outside of the cartilage, and it contains these chondroblasts. The chondroblasts secrete cartilage extracellular matrix and eventually become trapped inside of it in these lacunae. Once they're trapped inside of it, they stop being chondroblasts. They don't need to make new cartilage. They're already surrounded by cartilage. They instead become chondrocytes, which means cartilage cells. Chondro means cartilage. So chondrocytes are cartilage cells. These are no longer making uh, like new cartilage, but they basically exist to maintain the cartilage that's already there. The first type of cartilage is called hyaline cartilage. Hyaline cartilage is the cartilage that bone is made from. Um, so when you are a fetus, your bones actually start off being made of hyaline cartilage and, uh, and eventually mineralize and ossify over time although you actually maintain a cartilage core inside of your bones until you stop puberty. It's how your bones grow. You, your like bone tissue itself is hardened and can't grow, but you'll have this layer of hyaline cartilage that can grow, and that's how your bones get longer when you're going through puberty. That cartilage doesn't go away until puberty ends and the bones fuse together. We'll talk about that more when we talk about bone development. 
Uh, the cartilage extracellular matrix is primarily made of type 2 cartilage or collagen. Type 2 collagen is smaller fibers, shorter fibers, um, so they're less easily visible. And chondroitin sulfate, uh, which again is a, a, a glycosamino, it's a GAG, it's a, a, a proteoglycan. Um, and it is going to fill the, the, uh, the ground substance around the collagen fibers. You can see these chondrocytes inside lacunae that, that is a characteristic of cartilage, right? So uh, it's also a characteristic of bone. We'll get to that later. But if you see these cells in lacunae, these round chambers that they're in, that means that we're talking about a cartilage or a bone, probably cartilage. Um, in hyaline cartilage, you have the, the extracellular matrix is usually translucently clear with no visible fibers. So it looks sort of like a pane of like frosted glass, you can see. No real visible fibers there because of the type 2 collagen. And um, you'll see a medium density of these cells in lacunae. So they're not like packed up right up against each other, but you also don't see this huge sort of wasteland area. Uh, and they're usually gonna be scattered fairly randomly. Uh, where would you find hyaline cartilage? Well, you find it at the, uh, it's the type of cartilage that connects ribs to the sternum. Um, it is the cartilage that forms your larynx and trachea trachea and bronchi. So if you poke your throat a little bit, you can feel that stiffness in it. That's not bone. That's actually the cartilage. Um, and you also find it at the ends of the bones, and it's what cushions the ends of the bones. Um, and again, this is the type of cartilage that becomes bone. And in uh, pre-adolescence, you'll, you'll actually find it uh, in kind of towards the end of the uh, towards the end of the bones but but before the end of the bones and that's the part that grows our second type of cartilage is elastic cartilage um, elastic cartilage is made out of uh, the same type of collagen as uh, as, as hyaline cartilage this type 2 collagen fibers so again we have this sort of frosted glass appearance to the background um, but it has a much higher percentage of elastic fibers so see these dark um, thin fibers there those are the elastic fibers and you can see those elastic fibers predominantly in elastic cartilage you usually have large lacunae that are densely packed together so you can see here this lacuna is right up against that one and right up against that one and that one. So in, in certain circumstances, it can even look like cuboidal epithelium, except there's not going to be facing any sort of open area. Uh, but the cells are separated by extracellular matrix, but they may be still very close together. Elastic cartilage is found in um, the external portion of the ear called the auricle. So if you kind of flick your ear a little bit, that's what elastic cartilage feels like. Um, it's found in the eustachian tube and the epiglottis uh, at the back of the throat. Um, it's, as you might guess, from its elastic nature and its elastic name, it's very flexible and can withstand repeated bending. So like you can, you can tweak your ear a whole bunch and... Uh, uh, it just repounds and it maintains its shape. Our third type of cartilage is fibrocartilage. So fibrocartilage has uh, a much higher percentage of collagen in the extracellular matrix, and it has type 1 collagen. So remember type 2 collagen was smaller fibers that aren't readily visible. Well, here we're going to have much larger collagen fibers, and you can see that just like in uh, uh, dense regular and, and irregular connective tissue, it makes these thick pink bundles. Uh, the lacunae are usually less dense, um, but they are patchy. 
they're usually arranged in these linear stacks. And that's because these thick collagen bundles, um, you can't really interrupt them or get around them. So what you'll do is you'll have all of like a line of chondrocytes in between the collagen bundles and they'll grow in these uh, long lines. So you can see here, here's a line, here's a line, uh, here's a short line up there, rather than being scattered randomly. The matrix background has visible thick collagen fibers um, and fibrocartilage is uh, particularly found in areas that need to resist impact. It is very, very tough. Um, the collagen makes it very strong and very impact resistant. So uh, you find it in the, um, in the pubic symphysis, like all of the upper portion of your body is pushing down on your pelvic bone and all of that force is transferred to where your pelvic bone meets together at the pubic symphysis and that area has to resist a lot of force. It's found in the uh, annulus fibrosus, which is the fibrous portion of the intervertebral discs. This is the pads, the discs of cartilage that are found between your vertebrae. And your vertebrae support your entire body. So all of the weight of your body is compressed down on your vertebrae. Um, and uh, this very tough fibrocartilage is what's going to stop that from, uh, from basically allowing your, uh, your spine to get deformed. And, and in older people whose spines are starting to, to go and whose spines are fusing, it's because of the large amount of damage done over time. Um, to the fibrocartilage. It's very, very tough, but a, a hard life is going to, uh, to mess with it. Uh, it's also found in the menisci, the menisci of the knees, um, which is a pad of cartilage that is basically between your knees. And as upright walking creatures, um, the force of our entire body gets slammed into our knee every time we walk, whenever you run, uh, anything like that. So we have this tough fibrocartilage menisci there that's going to absorb that shock so that your, um, your, your, your uh, femur um, does not rub against your tibia. And anyone who's had uh, knee damage possibly from sports or from an auto accident or something like that, may have had their meniscus tear. And when your menisci tears, well, remember that cartilage does not heal well. So it won't heal by itself, um, and you will have bone rubbing against bone and nothing to cushion it. And you'll, you'll be in a lot of pain walking from then on. They can go in surgically and they can repair it, kind of like basically sewing them back together, or they can replace it with a, um, a synthetic meniscus, but it, uh, it, it can cause problems. You can also have fibrocartilage present where the tendon connects to the bone um, as basically just a strong anchor point so that the tendon does not pull off of the bone. Fibrocartilage is specialized in resisting compression and shock absorption. So cartilage is actually really important to the body and I want to point out where you're going to find cartilage and what types of cartilage you're going to find in each place, right? So um, you have cartilage in your external ear and cartilage in your nose. Those are both elastic forms of cartilage. Um, you're going to have uh, cartilage at the ends of all of your joints. That's called articular cartilage. That's cartilage that rubs against other cartilage to keep the bones from grating together. That's hyaline cartilage, as is the cartilage that connects your ribs into the sternum, and that's called costal cartilage. Costal is a fancy name for rib. Uh, and you also have cartilages in your larynx, um, which is uh, basically where your voice box is voice box is part of your larynx. Um, here, this prominence right there is your Adam's apple. It will be more pronounced in men than women, typically. Uh, and so you have a lot of cartilages here. You also have rings of cartilage in your trachea going down into your lung. These are going to keep 
your airway from collapsing. Uh, you have fibrocartilage uh, in between the discs of your vertebrae and, and your pubic symphysis, as well as in the meniscus of your knees. All right, take home messages for this uh, video. You need to know the three types of cartilage. You need to know their functions and what makes them different. You need to know the properties that all cartilage has and its arrangement with cartilage and pericartilage, chondroblasts and chondrocytes, where each of those would be found. Um, and you need to be able to recognize the three different types of cartilage uh, if shown a picture and know where you would find them in the body.